Hey, so in this video I want to show you my listening room. We just moved into our newly constructed house about five months ago and so I've been slowly kind of getting everything set up and so it's not very big, it's about ten and a half feet uh, square but it also ties into my main uh, or master bedroom. Uh, over here I have um, just all my tube amps that I've collected over the years. Um, I have the Mingda uh, tube amp here it's it's uh, from China and I looked recently and the price has gone up considerably on this one I paid 680 US dollars for it and I see now it's close to a thousand um, it's point-to-point -point wiring 18 watt single-ended class A it uses the uh, KT90 tube which you can also swap out uh, for a KT88 or a 6550 tube so it, it's good um, I'm the stock uh, pre-stage tubes aren't that great in it so I've ordered new ones and this this is what's got me into uh, the whole tube amp craze this uh, is a mini watt N3 and it's uh, single ended class A and it's three and a half watts per channel and it's kind of what brought me uh, took me started me on this path I guess of of low power and um, they do the, this amp uh, is a kind of a giant killer uh, compared to equivalent uh, priced amps. Now this this one is a Philips. Uh, it's actually a tube amp. It uses a small uh, tube. I can't remember what it is, but it's it's uh, actually it's quite a bit smaller than than the EL84, which the mini watt uses. So this is two watts per channel, uh, and it it sounds really good with. With the right speaker, um, like for example, a, a larger full range uh, high efficiency driver. Uh, down here, um, and, and these two, this this is a Harman Kardon Ballad tube amp, and, and these two I actually pulled out of like, you know, like a garage sale or in a pile of junk. This one in particular was under a pile of junk and um, had no tubes in it so I've had it restored and you can see there the chassis bent on it just from the way it was abused and but it, it's EL84 it's maybe 12 watts per channel and, and it's it's really really good sounding amp um, particularly with the sound stage it just does something with the sound stage it just creates almost like a holographic sound stage so uh, yeah there you have it um I've I've kind of switched back and forth between solid state. This a uh, friend built for me. It's uh, completely custom, pure class A, uh, solid state, and and it's got about 15 watts of power. So I'm really kind of as far as the DIY speaker building, I, I'm kind of focused on on making high efficiency designs. So that's where a lot of my focus has been maybe in the past five years. So these these are uh, I picked these up recently. They were they were for sale used uh, locally, and so these are uh, Japan's. Uh, the the they're sold as an Orax, which is Toshiba's high end uh, division back in the 70s. These a lot of people would dismiss as being garbage. However, if you look closely at them, it's it's got a a really decent mid-range. Uh, the tweeter is has got a metal bezel, um, so little kind of things that indicate this isn't just a piece of junk. So and also the 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 woofer, you know, it's got a a real nice surround on it, and then it's got a a cast frame, um, and then the front, the whole baffle is like a a thick resin. So the speakers are actually quite heavy, and uh, I just had to have them because. I wanted to see what they sounded like. Um, just kind of the curiosity got to me and I actually found a pair for sale. I was actually looking for these uh, particular speakers and I can tell you that they do sound great. The mid-range is great. The uh, high frequencies just sound completely natural. They're a little bass shy. Um, I'm not sure uh, what kind of pairing you would need for uh, these speakers, whether I need a little more power. Um, it's just a 10 inch woofer so so maybe they need a little bit more power but 
I do know that I tried some of some of the tube amps that I have, um, and it and it just wasn't cutting it. So um, yeah, but they do sound great. And then my Yamahas, these are normally what I use. And you're probably wondering uh, where where's the DIY speakers? Well, I always think it's good to keep a pair of reference uh, speakers on hand, just so that as you're doing your designs, you can kind of go back and compare and make sure you're not crazy. So I'm a big collector of, this is uh, West German pottery. And over the years I've been uh, collecting this stuff. So it's, um, I just find it really interesting. <laughs> the uh, really unique designs, really vibrant. And so yeah, stuff's hard to get. But you know, it's just kind of a esoteric thing, I guess, that, I, that I'm interested in. We're, uh, we're out in the country. Um, we're smack tab in the middle of a field. We have a four acre property and it's been great. We're very blessed. So there you have it. Um, some more, some more of my, uh, just odds and ends of pottery. But yeah, so yeah, my next video, I'm going to show you how to measure your speaker's sensitivity so that your, uh, your charts are accurate for your overall speaker level, which is important when you're dealing with low power uh, amplification. You really want to squeeze every little bit of efficiency out of your speakers. And so you got to have some kind of an idea of what your goals are. Your room size plays a major part in, in uh, how loud your speakers are going to be able to play in that particular room. So as my room, I intentionally didn't want it very big. Uh, just because I wanted to stay with the low power and high efficiency speakers and I didn't want to have to be burdened with filling a larger room. So there you have it. Another thing that I didn't really touch on, which I think probably wondering where where everything is. Um, this is the uh, Chord Mojo DAC with the Poly Digital Audio Player. So it's a DL DLNA uh, it's hard to explain, but essentially I'm, I'm streaming music from my network and it's just connected directly into my amplifier. I don't need a pre-amplifier because um, this is, the Mojo is, a, is actually a headphone amplifier. It's able to produce quite a bit of punch, so not really necessary and volume control is actually on the Mojo. So yeah, just uh, it allows me to stream music from any source really, whether it's my my home network, my phone, uh, from YouTube, or or the internal SD card that's that's in the in the Poly. So very simple setup. I can the the both both the 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 Mojo and the Poly there. They both have their own battery, so I can basically take it on the go, or I can have a second system and simply move uh, the the Mojo Poly over to a to another system in the house and have great sound. There you go.